Let's take a look at managing resource mailboxes in Exchange using PowerShell. So the first thing is you either need to be inside of the Exchange Management Shell or have an Exchange PowerShell session open. So you can see here that I've got an Exchange PowerShell session open. So the first thing we'll take a look at is creating resource mailboxes. So just like a mailbox for a user, we use the new mailbox commandlet. The only difference is that we're going to set the room to be true for a room mailbox. And these parameters here I've got splatted out. If you're not familiar with splatting, check out our snip on PowerShell splatting. And of course, I'm also giving this room a name and display name. So we'll pass that to the new mailbox commandlet. And this output we get just indicates that that mailbox was created. And something else to mention is that it, it does create a user in Active Directory. But if we look at that user using the get a user commandlet, you'll notice that that user is not enabled. Uh, so it, it can't log in into anything. It just uses that as an identity reference. And then we can also create equipment mailboxes in Exchange. Uh, and the only difference between room and equipment mailboxes is how it handles them. So as far as Exchange is concerned, they're really just the same thing. Just one's called an equipment, one's called a room. Uh, but to create an equipment, we set equipment to be true. And then, of course, give it a name and a display name. So I'll splat those to the new mailbox commandlet. And then, of course, this also creates a user that we'll verify using the get ad user commandlet. And you also notice that this one is not enabled either. So the powerful thing about having a Exchange manage a room for us is being able to manage the calendar. So I've got a couple simple examples here for calendar processing. And to set those using PowerShell, we use the set calendar processing commandlet. So for our room, I'm going to use the, the room we just created. So that's what I'm setting as the identity. I'm going to set the automate processing to be auto accept, meaning that it will automatically accept anything that's within policy. And the other options there are none or auto update. And the policy are all the other settings that you set. And in this case, I'm leaving the defaults except for two things. I'm setting the booking window days to be 365. Uh, by default, uh, it's 180. That's the number of days out and someone can create a calendar item. And then I'm also saying delete attachments to false. This is so the attachments stay on the calendar items so everyone can see them. And so we'll splat that and pass it to the set calendar processing commandlet. And then we can look at that calendar processing by using the get calendar processing commandlet and giving it the name of the calendar. And I'm also piping it to the format list commandlet to make it look nice. You'll notice here that we've got a lot of settings. So there's a lot of things that we can set here. And I'm only really scratching the surface just to give you to get you started. Let's take a look at another simple example here. Uh, for the equipment mailbox, what I'm doing here is I'm setting the identity to be the name of the equipment. But I'm setting the automate processing to be none. So this is the total opposite of the previous example. Instead of automatically processing counter requests, I'm sending it to forward requests to delegate. So I've got the, param the forward requests to delegate parameter to be true. And I'm setting the resource delegates to be an individual. So what that means is that every calendar item sent to this mailbox will be forwarded to this individual who will have the option to uh, accept or deny. So in this case, it doesn't matter what the other policy settings are. So if we go ahead and, and uh, splat that to the set calendar processing commandlet, we can then use the get calendar processing commandlet to take a look at that again. And since I didn't pipe it to format list, it didn't look very well. You can see that automate processing is set to none. Uh, but if we look at the whole thing again, we can scroll through and see that our resource delegate has been set. And that's what that's what we wanted. So the last thing, how to remove a resource mailbox. And this is dead simple, especially if you've been following along with some of the other, other um, mailbox snips. Uh, and that's just simply using the remove mailbox commandlet and giving it the, the identity of the mailbox you want to remove. So in this case, I'm removing just that room mailbox. Uh, and I'm also using the confirm false flag so that it does not prompt me. Bam. No more mailbox. That's a, just a basic introduction to managing resource mailboxes in Exchange using PowerShell.